I would be more in favor of maybe combining what you said, Josh, and making security the second priority and taking care of all of the security needs and the remaining amount being used for roofing. So if, if we would maybe adjust that motion to where those are second, third, I would be in favor. I'm fine with the priorities being contingent upon the pressing needs. Yeah, that's fine. So we need to make clarify a motion or or we're going to know if he wants to change or amend it, he has to do that. Okay. And following following the consolidation of the West Elm schools, the remaining safety and roofing needs will be prioritized based on the way we're doing. Yeah, and keep in mind uh, uh, yeah. and um, keep in um, mind what we're trying to do is we want the board to be in agreement here. We understand there are some details and the county will understand that too. We've got a little bit of, to, to look at. But if we can go in with a plan and say here's our top three, here's our estimates. We can tweak it if we decide to move one in front of the other. They just want us, I think, to have a plan, and we need to have that plan. So don't get too tied up in the exact detail. This is just this is first phase of the plan because we got to go back and talk about the other needs. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So there's yeah, a motion and second in front of discussion. I had to second before I, before I make my second a second again. Uh, the board will have an opportunity to go back and look at the money that's left over. How we're going to split between roofing in and uh, safety issues at future time. So bundling it together and prioritizing it as, as what's going to, how that money is going to be spent on either of those or both of those two uh, needs, we, we will be able to have that discussion later. At least we're moving forward. And so I second the motion. Okay. So that is still seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Sorry about that. You were saying. Great. Um, what we will do, we have a week from today, we will have our business meeting. And then the 29th, which I think is two days later, if I recall, is the joint retreat next Wednesday. So we'll try to get as much information finalized for that meeting as we can. And SFLA has already planned to be a part of that. So um, we'll work on that. And if anything, changes or if there's any details to be disseminated we'll make sure that comes back to the board on the business meeting before the retreat and i would ask that we also have the second tier in other words like the third column on the sheet i put out there the second tier because we don't need to lose sight of we're not going to well we might do all of one of the roofing or, or safety and things but we're still going to have major roofing needs a major facility need and other needs that still need to be on the radar screen as we have our dialogue with the county commissioners. Correct, yes. And we, as Anthony said, I think probably the end of the summer, a lot of pieces of our long range plan, maybe not every single piece, but many of the pieces will be in place. And so as we move forward, even though we have a bulk of stuff we're still chipping away at, we're also going to begin to plan for every year needs. We really want to start to put together a list that says, okay, we've done these schools, now we estimate the next school three years from now will be next and so on and so forth. That way there's a, a plan and we can plan for that, the county can plan for that, and we kind of know it's going down the road. So that's the hope. Okay, next, Mr. Bain. Mr. Plus Robert. And while he's preparing to come up, what I'm, the point of this, we looked at this a little bit. I think since we're looking at projects and we're talking about budgets and money, I think it is imperative that we understand what we have. And if we have property that we've been sitting on for quite some time, I just want to make sure we as a board believe, well, one, know what we have, and number two, believe that there's a purpose for that. I think if we have something and there's no purpose, we should look at either finding a purpose or getting rid of it. Because one, it frees us up from insurance costs and other things, plus it could free up revenue for us, even if it's small, it's still revenue. So that was the point of this. The, the list you have in front of you right now are um, properties that have been flagged as surplus. Um, you'll see on there um, that we own the old Patterson School, Kaiser Building, um, the maintenance department now that's up on Clay Street because the vast majority of our things, uh, well, the staff has been moved over to uh, Long. We still have some uh, equipment over there, but it's in the process of being moved. Of course, our our offices here will be something that we'll have to consider in, in the future. And then the the other uh, five items are property. So. And 
Dr. Mills is going to bring this up. We actually, and I don't remember exactly when, but we as a board, I believe, had a resolution and said we were basically going to turn this over to the town of East Spencer when we were done. Okay. So I knew there had been some discussion there. I wasn't sure if the board had finalized that or yeah, not. Yeah, I think that's the plan. So unless so, something happens on the part of East Spencer, right. um, I think that's still what we're going to move forward with. And so, we have it on our list as we plan to dispose. So okay. And then, he, Anthony, can you more just get, I know, very great reasons why we were keeping these last five on there, just well, in general? Well, the, the, the last five, of course, one was a gift property that we just received that we uh, uh, wasn't well, utilized for the bus garage. That's one thing we talked about using. Um, the, the 36 acres over on um, 300 block China Road, I guess the board is on that for some time. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it was purchased and anticipating building a school at some point, maybe. And that's the Stag and Doe property, correct? It was one across from Stag and Doe. That's correct. That's that's the uh, thirty. That's the thirty-six acres there. And do you have any idea on the price of that? We are we are in the process right now of trying to pull the, the tax values to try to assign a, a, a tax value to it. We don't have it yet, but we're in the process of pulling the tax value for all these. You can idea. Okay. Um, so these plan to hold. We may come back and, and we view them and. That it, it was just uh, our initial thought looking at it based on the information that we've received from the board so far. Um, we certainly can go back and dispose of any of it, you know, if the board so chooses. But I, I think the plan was to, to hold on to it at this time, but, but to hold on to it and until the board decides what to do with it. But you're getting prices on this value. We're getting values on it now, yes, sir. So the board knows approximately how much, how much value is there. Well, I think this is a prime example of what we were just talking about. So, obviously, with that being in China Road, that limits your use for it, right, to some of those local schools. So, let's just use South Road High School as an example. I would love us to be in a situation where at some point we have a long-range plan and it says, look, we're estimating South Road High School has about 15 years of life left, just to throw a number out there. So, if we look at that, let's say that property is valued at $2 million, which that may be high. We need to sit as a board and decide, okay, is it worth it to us to sit on that for 15 years, or does it behoove us now to perhaps sell that and utilize that revenue? There's a cost benefit there. So it's not a decision we can make today, but just I want us to be thinking through this, particularly with the money cash flow problems that we see we have. Um, and your long range plan will help help with your decision making in this process by, by flagging where the road is. Exactly. And again, when we go to talk with the county, I think these pieces, it helps everybody and gives everybody, I think, some level of confidence that we're trying to put these pieces together. We're looking at it, we're weighing, um, even though we can't act on them immediately. Um, would you say, based on what you know, Anthony, that property there in China Grove, the 36 acres, well, obviously it's the largest track, but I would think, based on what I know, it's probably the most valuable regardless of the size, just because of its proximity to 85 and the growth and those sorts of things? I think it is valuable and your your your, your 20 acres next time I suppose it would be yeah, valuable right there probably too because, because of the location. So. Yeah, I actually forgot one. Yeah. That's a, uh, yeah, we'll be in a block. Dr. Mitchell. Uh -huh. So I was just going to remind you all to think about the summer you're going to get that land you study from how long you did. Right. And I think it'd be prudent for you to pay attention to that study before you decide to sell the property um, because it'll matter. And uh, they will advise you on land banking or where you're going to see growth. And, and we may not see a growth anywhere. Um, and then you're in a different situation. It's just a, a little bit premature of getting that land study will matter to you. No, and I agree. We're not. We're not here, we're not trying to make a decision to buy or sell anything. We're just at least getting this put in the back of our mind, something to hang on to. And once we get that, we can start putting them together already. We don't have to go back through this process. Sure. I don't think the mic is on. 
still take over kind of the control of the building and, and expense or they is that still included? It, it doesn't really say whether they take over the expense. I think what they're asking, I was looking at the last paragraph. It said since you'll vacate the building work before they're ready, they said we are contemplating an agreement, an arrangement that would grant the town as an assignable option. And I don't know what that legal problem is, assignable option with perhaps a two-year term to take possession of the building. So it would be two years before they would actually want to take possession of the building. And, and Chuck? It sounds like they, they want to maintain a two-year option on the basis of Just getting two years. Yeah, I don't know that yeah, would that be a problem. No, I don't think it's a problem. We just. That is two years. You obviously don't want to just let it fall apart. So somebody has to maintain it on some level, cut the grass and those sorts of things. So I guess there is a question. Yeah. Kim, did you have something? Just, just so there are. If your, if your plan is to donate the building, and then there'd have to be uh, an agreement to deal with the fact that normally the school system has to get fair market value for structure. So that's one thing that happens. Thought about and it's a little more complicated. We're not sure they want it. Um, the other piece is that, as Anthony was just and I were discussing, you do, you're getting ready to sign a long term interest in two years probably than five. Any kind of long term interest, county commissioners have first right to use on the city of the That marks that. Okay, and, and I knew that about the first right of refusal, so let me back up though to the previous comment. So, even if they said no, we have no use for it. You got to do what you want to. Do we have a legal right to then donate it, or does the school system have to have some type of revenue for it? The, the, the school government's reading on the state constitution is that we have to get fair market value for the equivalent for any school property. So usually, how you do that and not have a town or a university pay for it is they come up with some historic and social use in some way relates to education or whatever. It gets a little bit complicated if you try to give it to them and saying, well, we're not sure. Yeah. We don't know what we want. So uh, gotcha. we okay. just have to be And we can work through that. We got some time, so we're not, you know, we'll, we can figure that piece out. But the, the point is we're not planning on trying to put it in the market and sell it to somebody. So, Travis. In the process, along the same note, we'll be needing, how do we start the process with the uh, city of Cleveland? That, that facility, um, Woodleaf is not really a municipality, it's a community. Um, I know there's interest in Martin and Mary Ellen wanting that property. I already know that. The quarry across the road would like to have that building if we so that property if we decide to. They're, buy, they're buying up everything around it. Um, but you know, we also need to consider how we're going to do with the cleaning building. Yeah. Because we will have that also. But I, 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 I really will. The rations, we don't leave communities with old buildings that if they're not able to take up that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mullen. I believe we did have some discussions with the town of Cleveland. We were talking about a satellite library and use of the main part of the building once we moved out to the 
before it was dismissive. So we have had some preliminary conversations with the Yeah, and what we'll have to do through all this process is we'll just make sure we get with Ken or, or whomever at the time and make sure that we're just following the proper steps in terms of tra transferring something or however that works. So, um, in the same way, you know, if we build box somewhere else, you, know, you got the, uh, that same issue. So, um, any other questions or comments, Anthony, or from the board in regards to the uh, property list? Nothing? Okay. Thanks, Anthony. Again, this was just kind of a preliminary thing, so we'll have it. Um, Last thing on as a discussion item is thought exchange. We had a meeting last week. Um, it was myself, Dr. Moody, uh, Andrew, Susan, and Dean. <coughs> Talked with uh, several folks from thought exchange, and I think we finally kind of beat around the bush, and I think Anthony was there as well. Beat around the bush enough, and I think we're kind of on the same page now in terms of what we're looking for. <coughs> we, we made it clear that we have agreed to purchase a single, um, I don't remember the word they used for that. Engagement, thank you, I can never remember that. So we purchased a single engagement, we're not looking to, you know, to bundle or to go after more or anything like that. So we've gotten that far. Um, we are, and I don't remember, they've sent us some information as far as making a follow-up kickoff appointment or kickoff conference call which I think we have to get with Dr. Moody still to kind of check her schedule to do that, but that's the next piece. So we're going to get with them, and what they're looking for is just kind of what our ideas are. Our thoughts were we really would like to get some insight from the county on capital, um, and we're not going to say, do you want this over this, or do you want a new football stadium or library? And that's not the point. The point is kind of what are your thoughts on capital as a system? You can even look at it from a 30,000 foot view, what do you think are the problems? And then get those conversations going and see what those comments are so we can kind of see that, not only for now, but for the future. So that's the plan. Um, we certainly will have ample information to come back to the board at a meeting before that is finalized and start to be it's rolled out. Um, but right now we're just in the process of having to collect information from us. Do you have anything else on that then that I've missed? And that's pretty much it. So it's, it's a couple steps to the process before we get ready to actually move on something. But I think, unless the board has any issues, capital is kind of what we're thinking we need to move back on. Would everybody agree with that? Capital meaning future The whole, the whole, sh the whole shell. I think mean, that'd be very helpful. So when we do present something to the county commissioners, we can say, listen, we have polled Rowan County, and they're aware of our drastic needs. That are willing to support bonds or whatever. Yeah. Well, right. and that's a part of the conversation, I think, too. And we mentioned this the other day. It's, you know, it, it's entirely possible that something comes up through that process that we kind of overlooked or missed, and we say, "Huh, we really didn't think about that." That's a pretty good point. And then you back up and analyze that. So there's a lot of resources in 140,000 people. So we want to make sure we're, we're utilizing all those resources. Just to clarify, I, I don't think we'll actually get a poll. I know what you're saying. Yeah. It, we technically don't want people to vote or like a poll exactly. But what we do want to do is get general information. You know, we don't want to, because what we won't be able to do is say 23% of our population feels this way. Um, and that's kind of how I think of a poll. But what we will be able to do is say, we put this out, and here's some engaging thoughts of our communities. We heard a lot about this area, and here were some preferences. And we heard a lot about um, security and how they would like for us to approach it. So we're feeling like we're hearing the voices of the community when we say, which I do think moves to the next thing, because I think you will hear that engagement. We, there was a, we wouldn't be able to say, I think 80% of the community is in favor of the bond that but we'd be able to say there was a lot of conversation about support for that. You know, just, just clarify. That so trade is better than public. Yeah, well, and you did. Just to that point, there, there is a, a level of value to it with the, they, they kind of parallel it to like likes on Facebook. Mm -hmm. and, and not only do people communicate and carry on dialogue about it, but then someone can go on and basically like that conversation without commenting on it. So you do get a value of how many people were talking about it 
somewhat it's kind of like analytics, but yet it's still not a whole because you don't have 100% of the population. You have a certain percent of the population. And one thing in the meeting, we, we had a good discussion about it after we finally came to, after about 45 minutes of trying to get them to understand what we were asking or wanting. It's, I think one thing we realized is we want it to be as specific as possible, but, but yet within parameters, that's what we kept using. But their feedback will probably, they might range in different topics that we didn't even think about, and potentially someone might say something about a topic, and then that one becomes something that they're all talking about, and we just completely overlooked it. So uh, we, we decided when we concluded, and I think that's what Josh was saying, we're waiting on the timeline, that we would kind of write our idea of what we thought the question should be like, and then give it to them as the professionals to rewrite it in the way that they know it should be written. And then we would all kind of mutually agree on that question. Other comments? If not, that is the agenda, so we will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion? Is there a second? Second. Chuck, second. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you.